Yes. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Everyone here at the OCR, at the faculty, and those watching via YouTube. Uh, today is a pleasure for all of us to welcome a new format. Before I <laughs> welcome the guest, uh, to welcome a new format of the VK Talks. We are. This is the first time we do it like this, and uh, I hope it's a nice, uh, a nice um, idea, and that we can keep using it uh, in the coming times. So what we're going to have today is a conversation with a, with a photographer and an artist about the work shown in the exhibition in the OCRE uh, these days. Um, I will introduce him uh, later, our guest, I will introduce him later. Um, I would like to just let everyone know how this, uh, this idea was formed. So before the summer, we launched an open call to students at the faculty in order to let us know what they have produced in terms of photography that has informed their designs. So what you see here in the OCR is a, a selection of the work that we received that has to do, as I mentioned, with photography as an instrument for design, uh, very clearly stated in the subtitle of the, uh, of the exhibition. So the idea started because we all have our references, and this is my references. This is how I started thinking of this exhibition. This is the work of Enrique Miralles, the, uh, the Spanish uh, architect who uh, used photography as a tool of design. So many others have, for sure, but when I was thinking of how to organize or how to envision this exhibition, I had his work very much in mind. No? How much the collages that he produced, visiting sites, would inform the design. No? How he would use different techniques in order to end up producing ideas of urbanism and architecture. So. This was a little bit the precedent or the reference that I used in order to think of this exhibition. And then we launched an, uh, launch an open call. We, we receive a, a variety of, uh, of, uh, of proposals, of contributions, and some of them, as I mentioned, are here in the, are here in the room. So I will not go into the description of the work uh, presented because Johannes will uh, talk about them, but I want to thank to all of you who have uh, participated and shown us how photography in many ways, I think what is wonderful about this exhibition is the enormous diversity of uh, contributions no, that have to do from uh, a phenomenolo phenomenological approach to a site, a understanding of site through experience, experiencing the um, site, cities, and then finally how landscape is perceived. Um, so these are the contributions that we received. Johannes, as I mentioned, will talk about them later. I'm just gonna give a note on what the exhibition is like, how we organize design. So design of the exhibition, what you see here in the image, and what you see here right next to us is a very light system that allows for a, a very flexible, um, a very flexible organization. We decided that it would be very, very nice to uh, have a smaller format when it comes to the city and when it came to land Landscape, we decided to have a bigger format. So that's why landscape architecture or landscapes in general are taking the, uh, the, larger, the larger prints and the bigger spaces. Um, as I said, the format is very, uh, the, the, the design is very simple and you can uh, look at it uh, until the 19th of, uh, of October. So without further ado, and I was already talking too much maybe, I would like to introduce to you to Johannes, Johannes Schwarz. Uh, he's a photographer, professor at the uh, Ridwell Academy in Amsterdam, and we have already collaborated twice in two BK Talks. We were speaking a few minutes earlier about his first, his first contribution to the BK Talks when he, uh, uh, together with the Berlage, uh, brought his work about um, Hermann Herzberger's uh, studio and office and the place where he works. And um, later, we also invited Johannes to participate in the big eight talks that have to do with the introduction, let's say, of art formation within uh, design education and hoping that maybe design ed art education will uh, be a bigger part of our curriculum. It's just a proposal, but who knows, it might be nice. Um, it's not easy to go through all his CV. I, uh, all I can say is that he gave us, last time he came, uh, this book as a, uh, as a gift. It's called the Athens Recorder. It's quite a heavy book. That's why I, not, I was not holding it earlier, no? But what I really enjoyed uh, when uh, having a look at this book is the very nice images and the very, um, let's say, the way one photographer, one person, 
one user experience a certain city, you know, in this case, the city of Athens. So I recommend you, all of you, to take a look at it. The copy will stay here throughout the evening. So, um, Johannes, I'm very happy that you are here with thanks, us tonight. Thanks. And I just can give you the word. Please stand, talk to the students. The clicker is yours and the floor Super. is yours. Thank, Thank you, you very many much. Thanks, many thanks. thanks for coming. Uh, super happy to be here. Uh, maybe it's good to first see how many makers are here, because depending on this, we can take more or less time on the individual verbs. So let's say, uh, uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, five, five? Really? Good. But then we can spend hours, 20 minutes per person. It's great. Uh, um, the introduction was uh, 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 very kind, thanks a lot, and I would maybe like to, the first thing that's, that came to my mind when I saw the exhibition is the um, uh, two things. I think one thing that is very successful is the lightness of the construction, because of which you uh, look at the images on display, right, on this quite lump, quite industrial, long pieces of paper that's a, like a wallpaper. I mean, it is wallpaper, but it, I mean, it looks like, right? It is a, it's a very in, industrialized format. It's the opposite of a framed image on the wall. And if you imagine that these things on, a, on an actual wall look uh, quite improvised and quite, uh, uh, let's say, informal, but now if you put them on a, on a construction made of these, uh, I'm not sure what the, what the English word is, to me, it has the effect that, I'm, that my look at the images becomes much more concentrated and condensed, right? So, Mr. Kirstein, if it is your fault, congratulations. It, it, it is a very big, it is, it is, and the team then, because it is an, it's an incredible gift to the audience, right? That makes looking at images much easier. And the looking at the images is a quite complicated thing because there are so many around, right? How, how to grab the momentum that this image wants something else than the image you just looked at two minutes ago on your phone, right? Um, another thing that I found interesting in the, in the whole setup is the texts next to it. And uh, um, I'm impressed with all the text because in, in, in each and every text, there's two or three things that don't really fit to what the images do, right? So there's a very nice conflict. And not say that, that the texts are all marvelous, right? Uh, the Art Academy students couldn't write these texts. You architects can do that. Congrats on that. But there's a few points in the text of uh, each and every one that I would like to discuss. If the makers are here, if not, then uh, of course that's, that's, that's another thing to do. And the first one, maybe we can start with, uh, how's the clicker working like this? No? Like this? No? The other way. So we start at the... Yeah, I wanted to start with Mr. Kirstein, and now we have to do what? You have to move forward. Okay, I just do that. Because what... Yeah, here. Uh, are you ready? Yeah. Good. Uh, there's, an interesting, uh, there's an interesting piece in the text, and uh, uh, you're all aware of what you're looking at. You're looking at the Landbaubelang, and Landbaubelang was one of the uh, squatted places in Maastricht. Huge industrial building, and uh, um, have you ever been there? No, yes, maybe. It's an extraordinary big squat. Uh, with extraordinary uh, diverse uh, uh, group of squatters in there, some were there for a very long time, others just stayed there temporarily. Anyway, there was one thing in the text that uh, Alex wrote that I would like to uh, mention. Um, and he says, in order to develop my project, I needed to deeply understand the people I was going to design for and the spaces they had built for themselves throughout the years. The squatters obviously could stay or could not. Could they stay? They are still there to this day. But yeah, so uh, they're at threat of eviction. And did you manage to understand the, uh, them, the spaces? The yeah, I think so. Actually, the work also was part of a, a research group. It was like four or five people. So we were able to join forces into what part we were looking into. So some were looking more at like floor plan detailings, like sort of actually trying to understand what we were seeing in plan. And I was doing photography. So uh, the combination made it for sure possible to understand a bit more, yeah. 
And if I say something very brutal and mean, and a bit too mean maybe, if you look at the images, then they all resemble something else, right? So right under, you're seeing a, what do we see? Guess, it's not complicated. Huh? No, a gym. So the nice thing is the photographs are all taken in the sense of this this should be a gym, or this is a gym. So what, what I'm very curious now to Alex, the question, right under is the gym, it's the gym, right? I photographed it too. This is why I know it. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's a bit mean, but look, it's the gym. And then up there is uh, an interesting transition era, uh, era where then at the very end there's rooms, but you're standing in between anything, right? Cafe, and one more time the cafe. So maybe, maybe I know that you photographed six times as much. Maybe you could say why these four. Yeah, I would I would agree or admit that it was really hard to choose four, um, especially because for the goal of this body of work, I was trying to look at everything all at once. So when I used it in my actual graduation work uh -huh. to design, I wasn't looking at these four. Uh, I think that is maybe a little bit of a product of this exhibition, which these four were never intended for. Um, but also the left ones, it's not the, sa it's not the same cafe. So it's the big hall, and it's on the top left is the cafe. Yeah, but I mean, you, I mean, what, what you're showing us is, is, I mean, you're saying, I tried to understand this quote is how they built, and it's an interesting approach, and there's a, it's a great book about architecture of appropriation. So what does squatting and improvising in architecture mean? So it's just wondering, what can you, I mean, an open question, because I don't know, what can you photograph as an, let's say, architect or analyst in a squat, right, that is new to you? Do you photograph as something that you recognize? Or you, do you see your intention or their intention, right? I think this is my main interest. Do you see the quarters, or do you see the potential plan of yours? When I was photographing this, I had no idea what I was going to do architecturally. So uh -huh, I didn't yeah. actually go in there with that <laughs> mindset. Mm -hmm. um, I had the feeling that there was, this is, um, yeah, Johannes mentioned it's a really large squat. It's like five floors. Uh, with a really large floor space. I don't even know how many square meters, but it's massive. And 20 years have done its work uh, and layering of, of different people doing different things. So for me, it was actually, I was walking around hmm. and I was taking the pictures. I was trying to find, well, somewhat, sometimes beautiful moments, like with the ladder and the lights, sometimes a bit more grudgy moments, sometimes people's moment um, moments. But I. I was trying to also just see first and later on uh, digest what I was looking at. So yeah. for me, it was a little bit like recording more than I could ever take in in that moment. And then later on, I got back to it. So <laughs> I don't know how much I understood at the moment I was walking through. Probably enough to, uh, to be willing to take more in. You know, this is the biggest booby trap of photography, that you're always hungry, right? It's never enough. Right? And the good news with the analog was that the film was full, now with the digital, I mean, there is no stop. You just continue, right? It's never enough. So that's reassuring for me as a photographer to hear that you suffer from the same, right? That you can't stop. Um, why, the, why, why not eight? Why not, why not many small ones? Why not one? Honestly, I think this was well, in my case, it was also a little bit weird because I knew what the size w it would be on because <laughs> I was also designing the layout. Um, it's good to know. No? So, uh, <laughs> so, so now you know how it, things go. The <laughs> selection somehow, I think, was based also on the fact that I knew uh, what would look good and what size. I, I didn't I didn't send in right. 20 because I knew we wouldn't yeah. be printing 20. If in doubt in future ask the one who was in charge I mean it it's it's an honest uh, it's right that always helps because it looks good <laughs> um, well um, but if I if I can add something I think sure. I I would indeed actually to really tell the message of what I was trying to research at the time I'd rather have more images that all add up to something rather than a, maybe for aesthetically more beautiful ones, but for 
what I was doing, namely trying to understand really the entirety of this mm. place. And maybe I would have, uh, in that sense, tried to, like uh, in Ren's contribution, there's a mosaic of many different ones. Uh, he's also looking yeah, at yeah. many different places. We'll get to that. No, I'm just, I'm just asking in all honesty, but because I think if you sort of collect or if you sort of take in or sort of uh, understand while doing, I mean, this is how you describe your method, right? Just walk around, photograph and see what that, you know, what, what I can get from it. And probably the consequence is that you show them all, right? And say, look, this is what I found. Or alternatively, you really edit them. But if you edit them, I mean, you're, you're always in, in step, a step ahead, right? You, you took the first decisions, which maybe for you as an architect is not the way you would work. For me as a photographer, that, that, that would be the way to work. I would even find within the space uh, logic what to photograph, right? So I would maybe maybe uh, uh, concentrate on the, on the improvised spaces only. You know, the gym, something that should look like a gym, right? And then wonder what, why the ingredients sort of match or don't. So, uh, um, what did you photograph? Um, yeah, I was, uh, I was, I photographed it all, but I, I was um, interested in the reuse of material, mm, of uh, garbage plates <coughs> rearranged to new walls, and I photographed, uh, I had to photograph sort of structures, and I think my, my focus was mainly on, uh, I really had to photograph architecture details. It was for the book for the architecture of appropriation, so I really had to be quite straightforward, quite dry, maybe boring, but uh, I like the idea of the assemblage in the thing. So uh, there was enough, you know, happening in the photographs that I didn't try to make good ones. So I just took very straight, st like this, knip, go. Yeah. What shocked me, what I found confronting, that I knew it's so very temporary that, uh, that they disappear, right? And then I tried to save them by photographing them. It's a bit neurotic, but uh, yeah. So I clicked away. Mm -hmm. Happy to, to show them to you if you like, yeah. How long ago was your shoot? Um, mine was 2019, uh, 18, 19, some, some time ago. Yeah, yeah. When I was there, there was uh, no, no danger ahead. Um, this is the chance to ask Mr. Kirstein the question that you always wanted. Uh, no, maybe. I mean, I would ask why did you photograph it in color, but it didn't, right? <laughs> Good. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> why, why, why did you photograph it in color? <laughs> You're not a black and white guy? No, no that's not even true. Um, I mean, the, the image on the top right, for example, that's an image where even though it's not spectacular color in terms of level of information, there is information there as an architect that totally. I definitely wanted to have in. Yeah. I'd say that the softness that it has, I mean, it's, it's a uh, um, silo. what's that in English? Uh, Grain silo. Yeah, yeah. It, in a harbor. It's, it's really industrial, right? And not a little bit, but massively. The squatting added some softness to it, and the softness is kept in the color. So I totally, I totally understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Cool. Thank um, the next one would be uh, Alexandra. Is she here? Not? Maybe? We have one more question. Yeah, hi. Good, you. Good you came. Hi. Uh, Alexandra is here? No? Maybe? No? Uh, no. Hold on, this is Grisha, but uh, I was thinking, uh, no, I want to go Grisha. Okay, yeah, here, here you are, go, yeah, cool. Um, hi. Hi. Uh, maybe you shortly introduce it, what you, there's the sort of a two sides, and uh, I mean, you're not from here, right? This is not no. your neighborhood where you grew up, it's no, not where you had to go to school, so. Yeah, this was based on the first project I had when I arrived in Holland in the first semester, and it was kind of getting to know Rotterdam. Mm -hmm. And there are all these moments between the port and the city, and this especially was this peninsula that came out. 
And actually, it, it would be interesting to see with the plan of it. It's just these two streets where it's all industry. Every building is, is, makes no effort to invite the public into it. Mm -hmm. So early one yeah. morning, cycling up and down. Um, it was, yeah, because also in the project, we had been examining this place through maps and through mapping and QGIS, whatever. And then suddenly you're there. And it's a completely different place from all the drawings you've been doing that have been on a kind of one to 5,000 scale. So this was quite a harsh reality, bringing this back to the team that we were working with and saying, actually, no, this is a completely different side to what we think it is. Mm -hmm. And it's just these long, monotonous, industrial mm -hmm. kind of, yeah. I must say, I'm totally impressed with something very banal, but photography always does, but you sometimes forget cutting things off. Mm -hmm. Right? And then uh, I'm, I think I'm, I'm fond of it, right? The more cut off, the more movement, the better. But here, with the left and the right hand side being sort of cut off, mm. I'm, I can sort of imagine what there is, but at the same time, I think well, that can't be true, mm -hmm. right? So, so strangely enough, the perspective, which is a quite sort of, you know, it's not, it's not let's say, spectacular maybe, but it is so breathtakingly uh, uh, effective, right, that you, you have this endlessness because of the left and right uh, cut of, uh, mm -hmm. but with all the images, just look at mm -hmm. it. Uh, so I think this is very, uh, really intimidating. Yeah, and that's exactly how I felt. And it's also true in that there's no, there's no kind of metaphor or deeper meaning. It's just quite intentionally objective observations, but um, yeah. And, but there's more, no? In what sense? More images you took. Yeah, there were plenty more, but these were the ones that I felt most strongly conveyed. And wouldn't you have then, if you are able to photograph that way, so clearly, mm -hmm. rightly, informally, so convincing, wouldn't you be sort of tempted to make it into a typology of the, the Lost Harbor area? Yeah, for sure. For um, sure. And then why not show 20, please, in a block? Yeah, yeah. No? Just I imagine think, how that... Boom, yeah, because I think actually, that? in retrospect, because of the perspective of these images in particular, not all of them had them. So I found this, like, the relationship of these ones after photographing them, after looking through them. So uh -huh. maybe if I were to go back yeah. and then, yeah. Artist notion, interesting, mm -hmm. okay. But, but hey, you didn't go back. No. Well, I did, but not for this reason, yeah. not to photograph the space. Yeah. And why is the, why do we see the, why is left up in? The top left? Yeah. That was a good question. I, we were kind of, well, when I was submitting them, there was a big decision to be made of which ones go in. But um, to me, it's in just the same reason of scale and okay. continuous monotony in some sense. And did you ever look down, sort of? Not so much, actually, because I think you can kind of see in the two on the right-hand side, it's just really smooth road for bikes mm -hmm. and for cars. And the pedestrians have this tiny sliver that they can go up and down if they want to, but it's really, it's not for pedestrians at all. And it's early morning. And it's early morning. I think it's great because there's no one, right? It's sort of sun, sun, sunrise moment, right? And you hear it silent, you see it silent. You know, it's absurd, it's in dust industry, it's of course not silent, but it feels like phew, nothing's the matter, like eternity. Right. Yeah, I think I, I like that very much in the four, the four ones on the on the bottom. I found the one in the middle on the left hand side. That was the first thing I saw when it when the PDF opened. It was like, fuck, <laughs> why didn't ever photograph anyone else that before? It was, it's a great image of this sort of road road sign together with the skyline. So if you want to ever make a Christmas postcard, greetings from Rotterdam. <laughs> that would be it. It's a really, a, it's a really a great image. Hey, color-wise, it's 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 shot on film. No, no, it's no. I used to do camera. film, and then I took. I didn't have any cameras with me, so I took a digital. And then this is now looking back because this was what a year ago now. Yeah. Looking back, it's like the the post-production editing is a, a, to me it makes me cringe a little bit. But in the uh, sense of too romantic. Yeah, yeah, thanks. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Why is he so romantic? Yeah. But okay, then we have yeah. the answer. Okay, yeah, good to know. Uh, questions? How would, I mean, would you, would you ever photograph there? Can I ask you that? Would you photograph there? Out of yeah, out of your own free will. Hey, Salomon. <laughs>
It's not necessarily appealing, I think. It's kind of industrial. It doesn't look like a location I would visit for fun. But it makes it kind of interesting to photograph it, I think. Can you read the images the way Tisha uh, did? So to, 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 uh, to make, make it as a whole. Do you mean, is that what you mean? No, I mean, do you, does it, is there something else than just to, to, to prove that he's been there trying to do something? Can you get something else out of it than we just for yourself? Um, it's, well, you can see it's nearby city, although it's, uh, it looks abandoned. Uh -huh. So there's. Does your architect heart bleed if you see this? No, mine does not. No. Not, not necessarily. Yours no. did. Look, I'm just, I'm just wondering, are you, I mean, is there, is it an image where that sort of half describes a problem, right? Or is it an image where it says, finally I made the image so I know yeah. how to uh, build from now on? I don't even think it was to diagnose a problem. It's because this is how it functions. It's not for, it's a problem we found in the project, actually. Yeah, but that, this, is, this is the way that the architect speaks. I couldn't help it but click, but <laughs> this is not how I think. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, right. you know, this is the space for the people. Hey, no no image comes automatically. Let's just agree on that, you yeah. know? No? Yeah. yeah. So then there is, there is something else that you were after. And you don't yeah. have to tell us, of course. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, maybe the monumentality was also very appealing because there aren't so many spaces like and can't this. You con if you would connect emotion to it, or is that a strange thing to do? Yeah, I'm, maybe because I was there on my own in the morning. It's kind of one of isolation and solitary feelings yeah. Um, yeah yeah and also just this endless corrugated metal and yeah and things being cut off as you go through because that's how uh, how it is if you cycle through the buildings just get cut off one by because one because that's what you did cycling yeah. yeah yeah any other remarks super sharp questions disappointments <laughs> proposals no no one hey Good. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Who's next? No, that we already had. Yeah, here. Uh, Anna. Uh, Ni? Should we nevertheless fantasize away together? Uh, huh? Yeah. Uh, do you know what it is all about? It's a, a sort of a reenactment of a performance of uh, Gordon Mata Clark. And then uh, it's a shame that, uh, that she's not here because there's an interesting phrase at the very end saying there's very little documentation of the performance that he performed or that he carried out um, on the occasion of an, thanks, of an uh, invitation to an uh, exhibition, probably shortly after his, uh, I think, brother died, if I'm not uh, totally wrong. Huh? Cousin. Cousin. And then uh, he decided to dig a hole right at the place uh, as, yeah, as a performance. And then, which is, a, of course, a, a, a very beautiful idea. And then uh, what I found interesting that because there's very little documentation of the performance, right, one would sort of reenact it, right, as an image and see how that works. So I was just thinking, for example, how many tryouts were done before, because it's a quite explicit form, right? Formally, it's quite sort of, it's sort of a muy bridge, you know, the muy bridge, the sort of scattered uh, movement. Uh, so there's, there's, there's knowledge to it, there's expectation to it. And I was wondering to which degree the image was sort of an experiment, or, I mean, could it fail? Or uh, is it executed 20 times until this was? Uh, Performed? No, none of you knows, but pff, no one knows. Do you know? No, no, no. So the the I think the amount of uh, of uh, or the time put in there um, at the place, of course, you know why there and uh, and so on and so on and so on. Why is she not here? Anyway, um, if you know the story, do you look different at the image? Of course, yes. Uh, and can I ask you the very personal question? Maybe, if you know the story, is the image increasing in value or decreasing in value? If you have to talk on the microphone, 
No, just uh, spontaneous, just don't, don't worry, nothing can go wrong. Can you hear me? Huh? So I think it's a very good question. But um, maybe you can imagine a bit, a bit better the, the movement mm -hmm. that uh, appeared there. I wouldn't say that digging, you recognize the, the shape of the human, but the digging would be... Uh, yeah, I think you can... You, if you would look closely, uh, you can maybe recognize it. Yeah, I think you can guess because you see the shuffle in a way. Yeah. But if you know it is about a reenactment, you know it is about someone's death, you know it's a spontaneous emotional reaction, you know. I think it's an interesting way to sort of reenact that as a method to understand something about a place. No, it's sort of interesting construction. I would never think about it, of course. But I mean, you as an architect, you are an architect, no? Maybe. Almost. I hope. Almost architect. You as an almost architect. Um, is, is, would, would this be sort of research material that you, I mean, you, you create your own reference in a way. It's a bit, you know, it's, it's uh, you surprise yourself, so, so to say. Yeah, it's, I think like performing uh, some movement again, so you observe it, but mm -hmm. you, you maybe can't uh, capture it straight away. So it does make sense. It's maybe easy to film normally, but this might be stronger than, than filming someone yeah. digging, right? Yeah. So I, I can yeah. imagine it uh, could be a method. Yeah. Thanks. Anyone else? Yeah. yeah. Of course. I mean, goodness, I should have asked you. <laughs> you are the performer. Thanks. Well, if I can add to his remarks, I think what this image portrays really well is the longevity of things and emotion. Mm -hmm. It's black and white. I think that adds to, maybe in a very literal way, in the dark theme that they um, respond to, basically. And I think in all sort of the, the stages in the imagery, they show time really well. So death is mostly a long path, and mm. I think all these these layers that show in the image, now I know the story behind it, I can refer to all of those in the image itself. I find it intriguing in, in well, when I saw it first, but I couldn't really understand why. I could imagine things myself, because there is, I think, something storytelling in there with the shovels that you can recognize, but now that I know more of the backstory and the reenactment of this performance, um, I think it shows really well what the story they try to uh, portray. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I think it's a good uh, play doy for the context, no? So where you embed it in. Yeah. So knowing the, the story behind it, knowing the, what it refers to um, makes us uh, uh, Appreciate is maybe the wrong word, but sort of read it differently. Um, so, yeah, just a shame that Anna's not here, so otherwise we could. Uh, she says more and more questions coming. Thanks. Let's continue. Uh, and then I'm always going to the wrong side, so yeah. Hi. Coincidentally. Anyway, do um, you start? Why don't you? Um, I can but should I find a complicated question first? <laughs> I can maybe maybe it's first to to explain some context behind these images for the audience, because um, I think my images and the research that I've done are moving sort of away from architecture and um, incorporating performing arts and dance in into architecture. But I think what the image show a lot as well as the relation to architecture, and that's actually what I study uh, now during my graduation project, as I studied architectural atmosphere. And what I realized when I wanted to study this is that it's very ambiguous, it's very difficult to study, mm -hmm. because it's not objective. Um, and 
I have a background in dance and acrobatics, gymnastics. So what I realized is that my body is really capable of sensing. Um, and that's what I did in, in these, well, these locations. I created a method for myself to be able to translate how I feel and also to analyze space, but then to directly translate my intuition and my emotion that's evoked by this space into movement. And I filmed that and I montaged these, um, these videos of like 15 minutes long each, which is quite long. Um, but they portray sort of a, a storyline in how I feel, the emotion and the relation to architectural space. Um, and these are snapshots from those films. And the films is sort of comprised of short scenes or yeah. locations? Yeah. yeah, some are these, like the, the ones that I um, selected now, they are a bit more of the, the level of the spectator in me versus space. Uh, but I also have uh, moments where it's very much detailed or it's about you don't, sh you don't see my body like physically in the image, but you only see my shadows moving or uh -huh. yeah, great. Um, yeah. all those kind of things. So this, this again would be a translation of the film actually. Yeah. And the films will be shown one after the other or? Uh? Um, well, the, the way I presented that now, they were um, rolling all um, at the same time, simultaneously mm -hmm. next to each other. So that you could really see the difference between each and every situation and its location, its architecture, and the direct translation and into the camera is fixed. Um, yeah, yeah, the cameras. I had um, a tripod, uh -huh. but I moved it around yeah, through yeah. space. On where but I it's not that you moved and the camera no. moved. No, no, exactly. Yeah, I think this is a good, uh, a good set. You're saying something interesting. Um, uh, uh, I was compelled to view architecture through through the camera's lens. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> The camera, <laughs> the camera. I think it's nice that you believe in it, but the camera is just saying yes to what you propose. That's right? true. Yeah. So, uh, it's, but I you think are it's the condenser; the camera isn't. True. Right? The camera makes it made, uh, let's say, liquid, if you like. But the, mm -hmm. con I mean, we as makers are the condensers, not the camera. No, that's true. Yeah. But I, I do believe that there is a relation between them, because for me, what I felt like, I, what I felt in the space. Atmosphere is such a three-dimensional thing that if I want to, f to portray that through an image or through a moving image, I really have to be selective in what I show through the camera. And I think that's the whole thing about photography uh, in general. But I c couldn't, couldn't we just rephrase and say you are very much aware of what you're not showing? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think so. Because this is improvised, right? Let's just agree that it was a tryout. Mm -hmm. By chance, it worked well, yeah. you know? But it could have been, you know? Yeah. Did you think from poof? You're good at it, but uh, and what I like is the, the sort of uh, sum of uh, your knowledge and experience with uh, the human figure, right? This is the funny thing of uh, author and uh, model as, you know, and filmer. It's quite complex to think of this triangle, if you like, which is quite unique. Um, sort of a painter photographing himself while painting in the mirrors, like, wait a minute. You know, that's quite, the depth is really condensed. And what the camera can do is sort of, uh, sort of list it up, right, of sort of spread it out, sort of, sort of stretch it out to make it, to make it accessible for us as the audience. I think in the, I like the, the small block down much more than the, uh, like, uh, I think this works very well. Um, with the three, with the three main images, um, uh, and don't get me wrong, because I'm hopelessly romantic, but they're a bit uh, almost religious, right? In their sort of organization of the space, and I think then um, I'm really more interested. Or I really like your idea of the movement and the, and the different, you know, the sensing of the space. I think that that looks greatly in the small ones. Thank you. So I think it, I can't wait for that you just it's an endless amount of films, right? Of a few just moving through the whole world. That would be just probably very nice. No? 
We'll see, yeah. Maybe. Exactly. I mean, yeah. the, you, you don't need anyone, right? No. Tripod, True. camera, yeah. you can dance. Yeah. You understand what space is. True. So please do more. <laughs> <laughs> I will try. Thank you. Good. Any other comments? Is this ridiculous? I mean, I could never do that, so... Uh, Um, I think a comment and a question. Uh, when we received his work, um, first he sent the big images, and this was only part of a PDF, uh, the smaller mm -hmm. one, right? And we reached out to him because I think all of us were particularly interested in the, the sequence of images and how that gave maybe or expanded the potential of what we saw in the other images. Mm -hmm. um, and you said that they're a bit religious, but I understand what you mean by it, as in when you see these versus these. Um, but I think uh, what's interesting about them and in some way bothering a bit is that they almost create the expectation of the movement. And then when you see the rest, uh, you on when, only when you see that, it's fulfilled, you know? So. Um, and I think uh, regarding the good whole... Good argument. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's a bad thing, a good thing, it's just a comment. And yeah, I yeah. think it really relates to the process when we receive the contribution and... But I like in the, in the small ones, sorry, I, I defend myself, of course no. I have to, sorry. Uh, what I like in the small ones is that I can doubt uh, uh, um, um, who is he in the, in the big one. In the big ones, I, I think you're a dancer, right? If I read the text, I think, okay, you're the architect, you know, but I mean, what it's all about is the sort of your N, 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 these three things. So maybe that, that isn't totally clear yet, but that, that in the long, long term will be clear if you continue working, right? Maybe that's a nice quality of the work that it sort of becomes evident the more you do, right? Just have to, it's a, maybe a strange comparison, you would say, are you out of your mind? Probably yes. Uh, you know the Bechers? Right, Bernd and Hiller Becher, the strange German uh, 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 photographer, artist, painter, uh, uh, minimalist uh, uh, couple that uh, collected all these industrial buildings over the, the span of their life. Have you ever seen them? But look them up because they, are, they present the work in blocks of nine, as I was three, three, three. And they're photographing industrial uh, uh, architecture tanks and, and mills and whatever. And, and now you have to imagine if you see them, the blocks of nine, they seem taken within one hour, right? Standing next to each other. Of course, that's not true. It's taken over the years, right? But the way it is presented gives you this idea of belonging together. Very beautiful. So this, this feeling could be in the fragments, right? That, that's what it has. It, it, it becomes one instead of one, two, three, four, five. Maybe that's a quality of the work. Okay. Ne, noch iets? Iemand nog? Eenmaal, andermaal? Let's continue. You. Here or not here? No? Ne? Uh, interesting other part because uh, double exposures on uh, uh, on uh, uh, center in Bruges um, visited twice once with the details of the place once with the details of the focus on the uh, atmosphere I'm lost but there were two sort of two sort of arms right and these two arms are then uh, let me just read it quickly to you um, should I? Did you read the text? Because if you don't, uh, look, um, there was a, uh, the, the method is an overlay of two different aspects of the site. It's an analog camera with film, so the film was exposed once and then a second time. And once, the first time the film was, uh, the camera was pointed to uh, the building and its larger contextual setting. And the second time, um, it was uh, uh, details and similarities. But now there, there comes a practical thing. You know film, right? In the analog camera, right? It's, it's 
film, film, it's image, 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 right? And uh, there's stripes in between. There's the end of the frame, right? It's not an endless uh, image. So now if you put the film in the first time in photograph, right? So the first frames in your hand are sort of clear images, right? And then you reload the film and expose it another time, <coughs> overlapping the images. But you don't. You have, of course, no clue on which moment what hits what. And now we get something very strange, because what we see here, there is no black bars in it, right? There's no... So if you just see sort of the, the course of the overlapping, which is a very strange thing, because the nice thing of the overlapping or the double exposure is that by chance, the new rhythm, you would like that, of the spaces. But this is totally cut out. Interesting discussion, but look, she is not here. No? Right. Um, next. Good, you're here. Uh, you need a microphone, and then you have to elaborate on the water. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, hello. Um, Tell me. Because you, the, you, you said in the text the site was moi. It was not your favorite site. No, it's not that you thought about a great site. No, it's a com complex site in your own words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But what you did, maybe I can say that, and uh, I have to exaggerate because it's really true. There's so much love in these images. There's so much dedication in there, right? You so tell us about that. Um, well, yeah, for me, it's also the set of photograph is more like setting up a question, and that, that, that's also why I like I kind of like want to draw in this um, uh, exhibition to set up this question to, so mm -hmm. we can have a discussion uh, about it. Um, so, um, yeah, here I just chose five, but uh, I think in total I took like 20 to 30 uh, images. So along with this, uh, uh, the photos, there's also this walk along the water that I did in uh, Maastricht from uh, north to south along the water. Um, yeah, so, um, for me, this is more like a what if. So I thought in the beginning, like I'm st research doing this research about the uh, the edge, and in this case, the edge um, the, of the landscape where the uh, water meets the the land. And I thought, yeah, what if I took all this like photos on the e like exactly on the edge? So put this edge in the middle of the photo, and also like the horizontal line, more or less on the same level. And all with the same um, uh, lens. That's like 50 uh, millimeter. Say that again. It's a, a 50. Did you hear this? Standard lens. Standard lens. Yeah. Throw your wide angle into the dustbin. The, the standard lens is the best lens you can ever use. Sorry. <laughs> oh, so really the, yeah. I thought it's also the closest to like human eye. That, it's a camera. It's not close to the human eye. It's no. a camera. It's something else. It's, it's not connected, but oh, it looks yeah. like. <laughs> no, Well, actually, the main uh, reason I selected is just to make sure that, like, everything it's yeah, shot with the same uh, lens, like, the same. So I don't change the view. Um, yeah. Page, yeah. Um, and can I ask you the brutal question, when did you understand that this is a good image? You didn't know. No, because each of them, I wouldn't say, yeah, it's, it's, well, for me, it starts to have a meaning only like when it's putting, like as a set or as a group Yeah, but of, after yeah. which number of image count did you understand, I got something? Oh, uh, Number two, number three, no. I, yeah, I, have, I actually don't know. This is, the, <laughs> this is the magic moment if you photograph yeah. that it, it's like, that's it. No? you had it, because otherwise you would have stopped. Um, well, I stopped as the walk stopped, <laughs> basically. No, no like but I mean, <laughs> you, 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 I think what I like about, about these images is that they are really, they, they have all the ingredients of what it means to discover the image, the world in an image, by means of an image. Mm -hmm. This is something you could draw theoretically, but you, it's an optical thing. Right? It's, it's yeah. perspective, it's the lens, it's the... Yeah. 
it's uh, yeah, and also you need the machine for it. Uh, Let me put yeah. it that way. Yeah. And also for me, it's a, yeah, it's also more like an ex uh, experiment because um, rather than like um, digital, I print them all out and I like fold them like through the middle and then put them like next to each other. And that would have been the work for the exhibition. Um, yeah, I actually sent like some like ones that's like more like a collage. Yeah. Uh, but they're not here. <laughs> um, yeah, so. That's also like why I chose to like compose it this way because you can fold it in the middle and then, yeah, just place it next to like yeah each other. Um, could, turns out like yeah, could, I'm curious for like what that could be. So and also I'm thinking maybe in the future yeah this is more gives me more of an idea of like way to um, do the photo so it could be applied to more. Uh, edges, let's say, you could also apply to um, fold, uh, uh, edge of building or water ed edges, so not necessarily only like the edge between water and land. Um, and what was the main the main consequence for your, was there some sort of aha moment for the next project that you got out of the purely photographic thing? Um, not yet? Mm, Never? No, Just I, I, mean, I would definitely like to try this way of photography more. So, like, um, yeah, that's a start point for an experiment. I think you should. There's a, a couple from Dusseldorf, uh, and they do, mm, yours are better, but uh, didn't say that. Uh, these kind of walks in uh, uh, Tokyo. I will later on give you their names, and then uh, you yeah, and there's the big books where they just walk through the city, photograph, 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 photograph. Right. So I think the the idea of the photo walk is a, is a relevant artistic mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. Sorry to say. So um, keep on walking, please. I think yeah, they're great thanks. images. And I think the 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 paper, the printed out paper that. Yeah, I would, I would like to to see a table or a vitrine where they are all in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sort of a, that. Yeah. fold it and then yeah. like whatever and right? also like shift like yeah maybe having uh, some space in between them or like shift them up and down yeah yeah because the idea is also actually this set of photos so what I want to reflect is like the hard edge uh, between yeah. land and water because that only makes this kind of photography possible yeah and the so. photographs have one very strange quality please try to imagine that they're sizeless all they would be good in all sizes right very big, very small. They don't need a certain dimension, which is quite rare, right? Usually a photograph needs to be intimate or big. But uh, well done, it's great. Thanks. Yeah, very beautiful. Let's see. Uh, yes, sir. Hey, yeah. Hello. So, Athena. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the void. Yeah, this um, this was basically yeah. a series of photos that I took during the uh, when we visited Athens as the, the city. So it was not I was not intending uh, when we went there to photograph uh, around the theme of the void or something like this. I just took a it lot happened. of photos, <laughs> and then um, after the project kind of developed and we started looking into that emptiness or this concept, I kind of went back into the photos to, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, find, try to find inspiration from, from them and at the same time get like a, um, how do you say it, like get to know the site more in yeah. detail because you have to kind of look into your own uh, memory of the place again by, by the photo. Say that again, it goes very nice. Say it one more time. I don't remember what I said. <laughs> no. so I, looked, I, I had to study my own photos to really look into what I got from the place in the first instance. And, and didn't you, because the photographs, what, what I like now, that, but look at them, you know, uh, what, what I like about the photographs, I have the notion it's either, 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 mm -hmm. right? So it was, you photograph either the shopkeeper or the two men, right? But they sort of seem contradictory in a way. 
and they seem yeah, they're not they're not easy images to make because on the one hand they're super obvious, right? It's like pff, you know they're they're so they're already anyway so known, but I like if if you see them in the in the in the combination, then the what I find is interesting that the movement in all the images is so uh, incredibly apparent. So didn't you photograph more of these people? Yeah, I have way more people like laying on benches, sitting on. Um, Wouldn't that be a great book? Yeah, perhaps I have to go back into it. <laughs> yeah. Not maybe 544 pages, but start with 60. Now, I think the people are the, what, what happens in the space and the people is, uh, is really uh, uh, magnificent in it. And I think it's not, not enough, but look, I, I love Athens. It's my favorite city. I made a whole book about the strange, I mean, you, you've seen the book, no? So the, uh, the, I would like just love to see more. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I actually send in more photos, but this was a selection made. Um, um, but, but even, but even like, I could go into the <laughs> before that selection. I could say because indeed Athens is like, I guess it's a very interesting city to photograph because it's it's a mess, <laughs> like in a good way. I mean, you kind of see it on the photo in the left top, but. Um, yeah, if you just walk through those through that city, you there's so much happening that it's almost difficult to zoom into like certain things. Okay, but this is why I'm saying it's so brave to photograph the guy eating nuts in front of his back shop. You know, I mean, there's mm -hmm. so much more. It's him. Sorry, it's him. Or the two men. Uh, you know, I was, I was thinking the whole day: did they know each other or not? Right. I, I talked to the guy on the right, but the guy on the left, I think, continued to talk on his phone. Yeah, he's so yelling I, into <laughs> his telephone. Know. But uh, I, I think they would, if I, if I could think, how do you say, this was a very small square. So I think when we went in there, I remember that we, I felt kind of intrusive of that space. Mm -hmm. So I would say, if I, yeah, yeah. I would have to guess, I would say they know each other. Yeah. But yeah. Which might even make it more interesting that they're not sitting next to each other. Uh, did you? Did you? Uh, not sure why I'm asking. Photograph at night. Uh, in Athens. Yeah. I don't think so. No. Next time. Because it just it looks like a theater in a way, you know, all the ch -ch -ch -ch, all the people there, and then sort of characters, actors, and then what? What if it is empty? Anyway, you're unfortunately a very good photographer. No, lucky enough you are. So uh, uh, it's, a, it's a shame that it's only these uh, five. I Next would time like more? No? Yeah, maybe we can uh, have a look at the rest. Um, the, yeah, and the, it just fits with what you wrote. So there's nothing strange in there. Good news. No, there's nothing where I thought boring. Mm -hmm. No, not really, but I mean, it's just so one-to-one, uh, -one. it's great. Uh, any more applause? No? Maybe? I, I, think, I think what you said t towards the beginning about needing to look at your photos afterwards to find out really what you did uh, is implicit in all of the sets of photographs and the photographers we've gone over so far. I think in a similar way where if I was somebody on Instagram who just followed hot supermodels, okay? And I looked at the list of hot supermodels like a year later and I noticed that all of them were of a particular skin color, but I didn't notice it in the beginning, you know, what they say about uncovering unconscious bias. And I think that's something that's worth reflecting on when some, when you hear a lot of people say, oh, I just went in there with no expectations Humans don't exist in a vacuum. Of course. I think it's a very good uh, comment. Thanks. Good. I've lost too much applause from my side. Anyway, okay, punishment. Uh, true. You only could do this because you were, of course, trained as what you are, an architect. Rather, uh, otherwise, I think you would never... I, when, when I went there, not being an architect, I didn't understand the void, right? I was like, oh. So true that you agreed on a, a principle beforehand, sort of being 
let's say, uh, has sensibilized. What's that in English? Uh, uh, thank you. Say it again. Sensibilized, right? Pays off very well, right? I mean, that's what you need as a photographer, right? Did you say something else? I don't know if that word exists. <laughs> probably. <laughs> but probably it does. <laughs> I wanted to ask something now, bringing this back to the exhibition theme, uh, which is, yeah, photography as a tool for design. Uh, as you said, you went along, you just went along with it while you were doing this, but then after that, did you develop something specific architecturally from this? What did you learn from those images? I guess the, what I, I guess the, the kind of, conclusion of the project in the end can be um, like the core of it I would say is actually that we we were we kind of agreed that there has to be emptiness in cities but um, but I kind of got from the photos which I guess you can see for example in the shop front uh, in comparison to the one at the top right with the bricks that um, every empty space is different in size and different in measurement and different in thickness, you could even say, which makes it, um, um, how do you say, which makes it good for a certain type of maybe activity or filling up basically. So I guess the conclusion of the project in the end was that we created voids, but they were not completely empty. They always had some and this is also inspired on the ruins of Athens. They, also, they always had something that uh, would hopefully then, of course, inspire for action. Um, so they were at the same time empty and, and kind of filled up with something that was already implying um, some activity, perhaps. I think that's, that's what I took from the, from the photos, from looking back at it. Thanks. That makes a lot of sense. Cool. Let's see, who's next? Elodie? No? Um, mm, there's an interesting theory, though, about the collage and the barrier. But, uh, as LOD is not here, let's not do it. Uh, Michal? Me? Are we through with all the. Jonathan? Uh, the first one is the Jonathan would have been interesting because uh, there's an interesting mix of blurring, Xing out, describing, and redrawing. And then saying, I feel now I understand better. That would have been an interesting talk. To ask questions, uh, Sean, nee, auch nicht, and oh. It's like a slideshow, no? They're either on sharp or the wrong direction or the. Uh, nee. 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 Auch nicht? Ja. Hi. Please join us, Karina. Yeah, good you're here. Yeah, they got the drill by now, so it's first it's your time, and then uh, tell us. Uh, well, actually, I wanted to ask what, uh, what your view is, and not in a way at, oh, you like it or you like it not, but without reading, or I don't know if you read it uh -huh, already, without, but just uh, what does it? Without reading, uh, uh, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Too eclectic, um, too <laughs> abstract, <laughs> abstract. Um, um, uh, too open, okay. too little horizon, too... Um, um, no context. Uh, <laughs> no, no, not you enough. I don't see you, mm. right? And you're so specific in the text what you're writing about it, which is very beautiful. Mm. So I thought, from wow, what a great text. And then I thought, huh, didn't, there, there must be more images. 
there were yeah. more images. Yeah, uh, find someone to know, because th I think the text and the images don't, the text is great, it's very beautiful. So I thought, uh, why would you choose those? Um, okay, partly Sorry. it is, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll try to explain it a bit. Uh, I had this, uh, uh, yeah, project, but I didn't take these images for the project. The images came before the project came, so uh, in my daily life I'm just taking pictures. Uh, I'm w walking around, I'm going to a library, um, and suddenly I see something like, oh, whoa, um, this does something with me, or this yeah. is quite nice. And then I capture it, but sometimes I change it. So uh, the mm -hmm. two images above, I took them in a portrait uh, stand, mm -hmm. and uh, turn them around because I like how it gives you a different point of view. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you're writing it here, you're but my surprise probably was that that's just what you describe here. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking, if this is your way of working, I imagine you have a huge library of images. In indeed. <laughs> but why choose three? No, it's like um, different sizes, why not just have sort of a contact sheet for these, uh, that would have been exactly what you're writing. Uh, I didn't think Practically, that it's just a practical remark, sorry. I didn't think of choosing more than five images or making a, like a collage of more. Yeah, but you could have said you make five contact sheets and then everybody would have said applause, what a good idea. Part of photography is to trick amount numbers in these conventions, sorry. Uh, I saw you this uh, open call pretty late. Yeah, no, and no, I know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I think what, 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 how you write that you sort of Im collect these moments and then analyze them afterwards, sort of juxtapose them and find out what you know why they met and how they met, her, which is very beautiful. Uh, uh, um, I think that um, the word evoke is in the text, which I uh, uh, like. No, um, then I would have been just too curious. Now I have to read them very symbolically, you know? Maybe that's my main complaint that I would say, oh, if you had, if he would have had five contact sheets, you know, very simple ones with just images next to each other, maybe organized, maybe not, then, uh, then I would have been on your train immediately. Hmm. Sort of hypothetical discussion, sorry, but uh, yeah. I don't know what uh, I don't know what to add. No, no, to, uh, to uh, but yeah, the images are not here, so yeah, so it's a shame. It's next time, be very brutal and put all the images, right? Uh, and discuss, negotiate with Mr. Kirschner, and he would say, of course, yes. But uh, yeah, it's it's very the, the way you work with the medium, I like very much in the text. Yeah, it's always, I think the interesting thing is, you know, a photographer can I say that m usually you make the work and then you try to decorate a text around it, right? But here, it's, with you, it's the other way around, or you are very good uh, uh, writers. Here, it seems that you, you know, that they meet on, a, on the same level. And then I would say uh, the text is so much more uh, generous or open than the three images. It's a sheer matter, to me, it's, it's, it's a sheer matter of uh, quantity. Can I ask something? Sure. What do you think about balancing, if you, if you talk about showing a lot of images, how do you then balance? Um, because if you show a lot of images, then sometimes the details try to disappear in their mass, the details of the images. Like showing, for example, the big one there, the green one, versus showing a hundred of them there, um, in which you can only see maybe um, for example, with the performance, you see a figure, but we then it's very distilled. What you see, how do you how do you see them? I would say the 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 the, um, the attitude or the message or the the plan or the concept or the 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 urge or the momentum is so much different. I would just in this case think that if you talk about the the um, um, process, if you like, right? How it influences, how looking influences your thinking in space. Then, of course, I'm interested in seeing, hey, okay, where does it start, you know, and what, what comes along, right? So if you imaginary propose sort of a distance to me, 
you know, that you stroll along. I want, I want to see all the moments of the, of the way, of the, uh, of the path you walk, so to say, right? And then I don't mind whether there are small images. At least I said, aha, you'd been in the harbor, you'd been looking up through this glass roof, you've been alone there, together there, and so on and so on. So it's not necessarily about this sort of dissecting the image that we might want to do here. Although I'm not really sure whether I like the big picture more than the small one, right? But I would say, depending on the, with the dance, I would say I'm I'm more I'm more intrigued by seeing that uh, you know what how the two combine than analyzing one one image alone. Uh, but look. Uh, it's always complicated to say if, if an image is big and beautiful, yeah, it's so, pff, yeah, can you say no? I think it's very much depending on what the, what the intention is. So I would, I would, the honest answer is use it strategically. There is no good or bad. It's a sort of a strategy, really. It's a cold, cold-blooded strategy, sorry. Nothing else. <laughs> Can I comment something on uh, Karina's work? So I actually really like the uh, really t uh, the the, uh, the top one because in the, uh, as you look at from far uh, distance, well at least for me, uh, the first instance I thought it was just shot like horizontally. So you see like uh, columns and glass walls, but actually like when you look closer, it's actually um, rotated. So the the columns are actually like supporting uh, support the structure between the walls and you have a glass roof. So I thought it would be actually quite interesting if there it becomes a series of photo where this happens like in space. So you, after you rotate something like the architectural elements actually changes in function or I don't know that what, what where that, that leads to, but at least for me, that's a yeah, interesting uh, sure. start point, yeah. yeah. Do you mind if I read a piece of your text? So, so it, it says very beautifully, I'm so a fan of the text, whenever, it, it says, whenever something evokes a particular emotion or feeling, I try to capture it and convey the dynamic that inspired me. This dynamic, whether intentional, designed, or for two years, uh, occurrence, is a central aspect I aim to reflect in my designs, especially in the context of public buildings. But thank you for us more. Please. Next time. Thanks. Cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah. Yoo-hoo. Let's just see whether we could get it on the big screen. Uh, I'm going the wrong way. Eh? God. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Thanks. Should I give a bit of context first? Hmm? Should I give a bit of context Please. first? Please. Yeah. So um, my topic for my research was uh, time. Mm -hmm. And I went to the Arctic where I did my project. And uh, a lot of my pictures, I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I went there. But um, I went into studying materials and elements that kind of cross each other or border each other. Uh, and you can see how these materials through time would interact or, or change, um, which is, especially for the small photos, uh, how, I, how I imagine these uh, uh, yeah, materials to, to change over time. And this is just a snapshot of a moment um, that I was, when I was there, in a way. And then I tried to frame it, to document mm -hmm. it for, for later. And did you did you understand the the opposition while you were there, or was it the plan beforehand? You mean, as I'm saying it, were you looking for it, or did you find it? Yeah, no. So, so I, um, when I arrived, I think I had this idea that um, uh, it was interesting to look into these materials that intersect, and especially. You have some with softer borders and some with harder borders, mm -hmm. and I think it came when I was there. Yeah. And 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 how do you jump from the close-up to the 
to the big one. Yeah. Um, I think also this is a hard question because I also had a thousand pictures. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it just rep represents a bit of the landscape that I was studying uh, and a bit on larger scale. Um, yeah, what you could see in the details through through this when you when you go into this image. So all of these elements, or a lot of these elements, could be found in uh, some of the larger images that are. Uh, With the difference that uh, the larger picture, because of its reflection, yeah. me standing on the opposite side of the thing is of a completely different order space-wise. This, the left hand one is unreachable, no, in my mind. I can just look at it, right? And with the smaller ones, uh, I can sort of, they're so, they're so close, no? They're sort of unbearable close. There's, there are rather few things in life that are so close to you, no? You're really on it, right? It's sort of an un, unhuman, unhuman look. I think it was a way of uh, filtering as well away, away everything else in a way. So you would look just at what I was. Um, and why are they so uh, from above? So sort of helicopter air, arrow view? Why did you photograph a piece of wood? <laughs> I think it was. Uh, or a rock. Or a piece of grass. Why? They look like maps. Yeah. But why? Why give up perspective, I mean? Yeah, I think um, it was also the way I had seen the landscape uh, before I went there. As, as, you, as you look at the landscape before you go, you look at it in this, this view, and you see all of these um, um, materials intersect from far. Yeah. And then you come close and you see, you see a different world. And more zooming in, because you're writing about water. Did you read the text? Did you read the text? Did you read the text? Yes, sir? No. <laughs> Look, because there's a, the matter here is uh, there is, uh, uh, no, where is it? Where is it? Uh, you're talking about micro details, sand, water, drops. I think you could even zoom in more, no? If you want to talk about that. Yeah. And then probably the contrast with the landscape. The, the landscape is great because of the of the reflection. So I'd maybe would, I would have loved to see more of the landscapes, maybe to see how that works. And then these, I would even zoom in much more. And the good news is, as you are not a biologist or a, you know, you, you could even zoom into the pixel level and see what what met, what happens then. Right, if you're interested in what uh, what what uh, what the uh, what the micro thing is, no, but the image has all the qualities in it. Maybe you discover something else. So maybe my complaint would be a little bit that you stopped at a point that you would still know, right? And why not, uh, you know, go through the the skin inside? You know the 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 video of uh, of the power of ten from the Eames. You know, and then they, they, they zoom out, and the zoom out, of course, is interesting, funny, but the zoom in is so, is so horrible because then, uh, you know, then you feel it in your own bones, not with the space. You think, well, that's interesting to see the space from outside. But the moment it, uh, the video comes back and goes under the skin, then things become sort of creepy. That could be creepy, too. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Other... Uh, careful considerations about, I'm jealous that you went there. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice trip. That's very brave that you photographed there because everything is so beautiful. I mean, you know. <laughs> a friend of mine went there and said, look, it's unphotographable. I can't, e e every photograph looks great. Yeah. And he's not into great photographs, <laughs> photographer. So I said, I stopped photographing it because it, I failed again and again and again and again. So I think to, I, I need to say that I see your sort of struggle for finding something else, and I appreciate that a lot. Yeah. Right? I think you managed on the left hand, uh, because the left hand, the, this one really is about looking. The left hand one isn't exotic. That's a good thing about it. Mm, any other comments? Maybe questions? 
um, maybe on behalf of the curation team, uh, also the left one, we, we, we Simon obviously sent a, f a couple more. And we chose this as well. This was, I think, uh, if I may speak for us, but we really enjoyed printing this one in large. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's also something that the exhibition in, in, as a whole is about, that we wanted to give the opportunity to have different sizes of formats that these images ever reach, because uh, in the normal process of education, this hardly ever gets much bigger than an A3. Also for just of course, cost of course, reasons, yeah, and of course, yeah. I don't know, we we never managed to have these things in such mm -hmm. large things. So, at least for us in the exhibition design, this was really also like celebrating the and detail and beauty is, of this. I think this works very successfully. You know, I think it's really a great show for all the different, and it says very nicely in the introduction, uh, in, in, in the introduction text, everything that can be done with the medium to one degree or, or another is done here, and I think that's that's a really a strong quality. Of the what you chose and you know and how you combined it, so I think this is uh, this is very very successful in that sense, and the sizes are of the prints do play a big part and uh, compliments for that. It's just brilliantly done. Applause. Uh, do we drink a beer together? Maybe. Do we thank the audience at home? Okay, maybe this is my moment. Um, thank you very much, first of all, Johannes, for spending the time and the energy. Thank you for your comments. I hope this was helpful. For me, this opens a way of, uh, of doing the BK Talks in a different manner, rather than having a panel of experts there and a public, but really have this kind of conversation. I think that it's really interesting to look at uh, things we don't look at that much, like photography at the Faculty of Architecture. I think Alex already mentioned uh, something about uh, the decisions behind the uh, picture selection, no? the selection of images. Um, so I will, I will not enter that. For me, making an exhibition like this is like uh, making a book. I've, I've done many, many books. You have to work with formats, work with uh, sizes, and then there's always certain agenda behind. No, there was this. That's what was last just uh, explained uh, earlier why landscape uh, is taking so much space in the exhibition versus other uh, approaches to the city, no? which are a lot more common, especially at this faculty. So let's not forget that this is the Faculty of Architecture, and hence landscape became a little bit more important in this case, and that was our decision. Um, in any case, I hope that it was a, a nice learning experience. Um, there's a lot of thoughts I have about selecting imagery that I maybe we can have with the, with the beer now. Sure. I really would like to keep talking about how to select uh, photography. But anyway, uh, thanks to you. Thanks to thanks all the to contributors. The Thanks yeah, to the contributors, the uh, I mean, we made you work. <laughs> then we selected the way we wanted, but that's our job, I'm sorry. So some of you may be happy or less happy with the selection and the way it was printed, but in order to, to move forward, and I always say this, you need to select. And, uh, and this is what we did by uh, when we produced this exhibition. I would also would like to uh, thank the whole team, uh, the whole new team, which is uh, here, as well as the new team of technicians that is joining us uh, today and will stay for a while with us. So thank you very much, everyone. I need to finish on a note, which is a little bit of, a, of an ad of the next event that we are uh, now organizing, which is this. So in two days, the treasury room, which is right there underneath the Tribune, will open. And uh, it will open with an exhibition from uh, three chairs that belong to the chair collection that were donated by uh, Ridwell when he uh, received the title honoris causa at the Tudel. So as you can see there, 5 p.m. on October 12th. Please join us for a drink, again, drinks. And uh, let's, uh, let's see how the new room looks like once we finally finish the works. Thank you very much and see you very soon. Bye.